probably water. Right? So again, we look at that 8th percentile at 30 miles an hour. So. I now call to order the special session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, September 18th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our commission meeting. I would like to thank you all for being here tonight. And roll call, please. Mayor Lahousis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. And we remind that the purpose of this meeting tonight is to get public input regarding the fiscal year 2018-2019 budget. Item number one is the resolution 2018-21 adopted the millage rate for tax year 2018. Mr. Herrick, if you please review the procedures required by state law. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Ron Herring, Finance Director. Florida Statute 200.065 sets of procedures for the adoption of the millage rate and budget. The final millage rate must be approved before the final budget. The final millage rate for tax year 2018 is 5.42, the same as last year. The rollback rate, I'm sorry, the final millage rate for, of 5.42, it's 5.04 percent above the rollback rate of 5.1601. The rollback rate is a rate that would provide the same dollar amount of revenues as the previous year. The increase over the rollback rate is being used to fund salary and operating increases. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you. The city attorney will read the resolution. Resolution 2018-21, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final millage rate for tax year 2018. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 18th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final millage rate, now therefore it be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the ad valorem millage rate for tax year 2018 of the City of Tarpon Springs is hereby established at 5.4200, a 5.04% increase over the rollback rate of 5.1601. Two, the city staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. Thank you. As Mr. Harris stated, the millage will remain the same as it has been the last three years, and we still have a balanced budget without a use in the emergency funds. And we're now going to the public comments. I am here tonight. My name is Chris Lang. I live at 502 Lincoln Avenue, and this is what I would like to talk about. We seem to have a problem in Tarpon Springs. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. This is not the public comments right now. This is public comments on the budget only. Okay. We're going to go to that later. I'll let you know, please. Excuse me? I will, I will, uh, if, I, I'll let you know when the time comes. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. Uh, I'm going to ask the question now. We've got 650,000 for the uh, preservation and, and, and uh, uh, for this old city hall to restore it back. Is that right? Duh. How much do we have in the budget for to take care of the uh, Safford House and? Uh, the old city hall and our historic structures around, and the library. Do you have any more questions? Because we usually get all the questions. That's it. I just wondered okay. because I didn't get to come to your hearings. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to make sure because we've got leaky roofs at the library, and we need to change the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, this resolution here is for the uh, for the millage rate. Well, that's what I'm asking. So, it's the yeah, that's for the millage rate. Well, the, the second one's for the budget. second this one's for the budget. Well, that affects millage rate. Sure, too. thank you very much. Wait, thank you. While you're up there, Ron, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and answer it. Uh, the budget of the 650000 is in this current year's budget to re do the remote renovations on the old city hall. 
And as far as historic preservation, those are usually budgeted within each department for those facilities like Safford House Heritage Center. And the library roof is already being working on it. Library is roof is in the penny fund for Thank about 480000 that. Because I got wet there the other day. Yes, it's budgeted and it's going to be started very soon. Thank you. Are there any, uh, are there any public comments on this item in regards to the, uh, to the millage rate? Any other public comments on this item? Here none. Are there any commission comments on this item? The chair will detain a motion. Motion approved. Second. In roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Thank you. <laughs> item number two is the resolution 2018-22 adopting the final budget for the fiscal year. 2018-2019, the city attorney will read the resolution. Resolution 2018-22, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 18th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final budget, now therefore it be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the City of Tarpon Springs annual budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 is hereby finally adopted, and two, the City staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of, and of the provisions thereof as required by law. Thank you. Are there any uh, public comments on this item in regards to the, uh, uh, to the budget? Are there any public comments of these uh, in regards to the budget on fiscal year 2018-2019? Here or none. Are there any uh, commission comments? I will entertain a motion. Uh, excuse me. Do you have one? Yes. Uh, I just want to reiterate my uh, our conversations from the last meeting that we had uh, pertaining to um, the potential additional funds that may be available if the grant is received for the firefighters and also if the north uh what do you call it um the park north of the river trail, the, trail. The, the trail isn't extended uh this fiscal year um one of the discussions that we talked about was looking at south spring boulevard and i know I've, i saw an email that came out that the city staff is looking at extending the sidewalks and fixing the sidewalks about the 800 feet that's missing. But I do think that we still need to look at a bigger picture overall and how to address the rocks that are out there and uh, still game plan on what our next steps are. So if we do not, if we receive the grant and we do not move forward with the trail north of the river, I think this is the area that we should focus on and come to a resolution to fixing this area still. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to recognize the, um, the Budget Advisory Committee, the Vice Chair that is here with us today, Mr. Pierce. Did you like to share a couple words with us in regards to the budget that you worked all year for? It? Uh, Marty Peters, 1702 Heritage Oaks Court, uh, Vice Chair of the Budget Advisory Committee. Uh, over the year, the uh, Budget Advisory Committee has met a number of times, and we've uh, gone through the budget uh, in some detail and asked a lot of questions and asked for a lot more information and pretty much uh, done our best to drive the city staff uh, crazy. Sorry about that, Ron. But uh, the city staff has been very good, uh, particularly, Ron, uh, providing the information that was uh, requested. And then that information was re, uh, provided to you, and hopefully that made it easier for you to make some of the decisions. We as a committee of citizens uh, recommend that the uh, budget be uh, uh, vote, uh, supported as is. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank everyone on the Budget Advisory Committee. You guys did an excellent job. We appreciate it. Um, we already went through the uh, uh, public comments. Any addition, uh, commission comments? No? And I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes, thank you. Well, that concludes the special session. It's adjourned at uh, 6 39 p.m. And we now go to a uh, community redevelopment agency meeting. I now call to order 
the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, September 18, 2018 at 6.40 p.m. Roll call, please. Chair Lahuzis. Here. Vice Chair Banther. Here. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Commissioner Kikta. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Item number one is the resolution 2018-04, adopting the final budget for the uh, fiscal year 2018-2019. Mr. Harry, if you please review the procedures required by law. Uh, good evening. The, the final CRA budget for fiscal year 2019 is $501,493, an increase of 68836 over the, a 15.9% increase over the adopted budget for fiscal year 2018. The majority of the increase is due to the increase in property values at 10.29%. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Chair Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Resolution 2018-04, a resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, adopting the final budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 18, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. to adopt a final budget, now therefore it be resolved by the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that Section 1, the Community Redevelopment Agency's annual budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 is hereby finally adopted. Section 2, the City staff is hereby directed Directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Are there any public comments on this item? Here now, are there any commission comments? Yes. Public comments? Oh. It's getting close. Not okay. There. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. I just, again, I want to reiterate from our last uh, meeting that we had uh, pertaining the CRA funds that we have and just want to ask and continue to ask that we look at an area as a board. Um, the need of parking is still great in the downtown area. If we could identify some areas for a parking garage uh, to have a further discussion, have discussions also um, to look at grants to encourage development and redevelopment in certain parts of the, uh, the CRA and also look at uh, potentially covering impact fees to encourage re uh, development also. Uh, again, beautification projects and green space and also lighting in downtown is an area that needs to be addressed. And I know some of these will be addressed in this coming budget, but uh, I know the budget is actually a little bit higher than we anticipated. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? The chair will detain a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Chair Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Well, that concludes the CRA agenda, and it's adjourned at 6.43 p.m. And we're now going to the regular session meeting. I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarver Springs on Tuesday, September 18th. 2018 at 6.43 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Lahuzis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Yeah. Thank you. Tonight's invocation will be given by Pastor Kurt Snare from the St. Timothy's Lutheran Church. If you please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Religion. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We give you thanks for allowing us to live in this beautiful city that you've given us. We pray that you would guide us to be good stewards. Be with our elected officials tonight. Give them your wisdom and your counsel that we might bring you glory. We pray your blessing upon this evening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a uh, special proclamation. Vice Mayor Panther will read the proclamation on Junior League Recognition Month. Yes, Vice thank Mayor. You. Thank you. A proclamation. Um, Whereas this 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 proclamation is issued in in recognition of the Junior League of Clearwater Dunedin, 
and whereas the Junior League of Pittwater Dunedin was created in 1986, and whereas the Junior League is, is an organization of women committed to promoting um, of, 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 of volunteerism and improving the community through effective action and leadership of, 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 of trained volunteers. Whereas the Junior League members are doctors, accountants, lawyers, homemakers, mothers, teachers, and other professionals who have united to reach out and make a difference in the lives of others. Whereas its members have engaged in numerous community service projects, both independently and in collaboration with other community uh, uh, organizations. Whereas the City of Tarpon Springs recognizes the commitment, leadership, charitable, and educational contributions to improving communities, and therefore I, Vice Mayor uh, David Banther, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the Mayor of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2018 as Junior League of Clearwater Dunedin, a uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the recognition month. And I, I, I just want to point out that this group uh, met met with me prior to the meeting to go over kind of you know their possible uh, roles in volunteering in city government and learn, learning learning more about it. And this particular club does do a large program at Tarpon Elementary, where I think it's called Pack a Sack, and they uh, they do a lot of feeding for uh, children at Tarpon Elementary that otherwise would not have food uh, in the evenings and on weekends. So. If one of them wants to come up and accept this proclamation, I believe, Mary, you, you wanted a picture as well with the commission. Well, if the ladies, that's what they wish. That's but what you wish. Is you, you want to do it? Uh huh. You want all of us to come there? Oh, I guess. So, you want to do your thing? Many branches. So on behalf of the members, specifically the new member class of the Junior League of Clearwater Dunedin, our heartfelt thanks for such a warm, warm welcome this evening. It's really something. I have to say that um, I'm a big civics nerd, so this is a big deal for me. But there are seven young women who have just committed a big part of their lives to volunteering in Upper Pinellas County for a year. And these seven women have never been to a local government meeting before. So you're really setting the bar quite high. Um, as far as our commitment to the students struggling with food insecurity at Tarpon Springs Elementary School, I'm very happy to tell you this evening that we've upped our commitment for the coming year to 60 students every weekend. So thank you so much for being great collaborators and for letting us hone our skills with leadership in your community. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your services to the kids. Now we're going to the public comments on the items that will not be discussed tonight. If you uh, have any comments, please come forward, state your name and your address for the record. You begin with four minutes. I'm sorry we had to hold you up. Hmm? I'm sorry we had to hold you up. That's okay. My name is Chris Lang. I live at 502 Lincoln Avenue. And tonight I'd like to talk about shopping carts. Um, although this one is cute, the hundreds that are littering our city are not. It seems to be an epidemic. 
I've taken it upon myself to talk to the managers of all but Publix and Walgreens, which put locks on their carts, and we never see them in our neighborhoods, in our drainage ponds, in our front yards. When I talk to the managers, they try to go to corporate, and corporate does not want to hear it. These carts cost 800 and more a piece. And there, I went to take pictures to present to you, but I ended up starting with 50 pictures and just was like, this is too much. I would like to see if the council here can somehow make it so that if you're going to put and use carts in our city, you put locks on them or you be fined. No one's picking these carts up and they're just everywhere. So I would hope that you would be able to look when you go out in the city and see it. We were just nominated as the best historic city in the country. And when people come here, all they see is litter and it makes it look like a slum. They're actually littering with these carts. If you go to the Facebook page, Tarpon Springs Happenings, there's a lot of us out there who have brought them back and who have issues with the carts and no sooner do I bring it up to the trail so the trail will clean it up, there's two more in its place. So I would hope you would be aware of what's going on and make provisions to force these corporations to put locks on their carts so they're not littering our city, because it is beautiful. And this isn't what we want to see in our yards, and this is not what we want to present to our tourists. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. If you have a comment, please come forward. Who's next? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandy Rizaldi. I live at 540 East Boyer Street, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm seeing them all in my neighborhood. I've also approached the managers and stuff, and they said that the, the, t the city comes out and picks them up. That's what I've been told. Also, my daughter works at Publix, and we've seen, we're starting to see Publix carts. They're breaking off the locks. So just to let you know, just to piggyback on our friend over here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, and all of the members of this Board of Commissioners. It has recently been brought to my attention that some or all of the members of the Board of Commissioners may have taken offense or incorrectly misconstrued a statement I made at the September 4th Board of Commissioners meeting. I wish to clarify that it was not my intent to insinuate that anyone from this office, meaning the Board of Commissions, is responsible for any wrongdoings. As the Executive Director of the Shepherd Center, I am passionate about the work that we do to assist those in our community that have come upon hard times and are in need of a helping hand. In the heat of the moment, I may have improperly communicated my position. For this, I am truly sorry. I sincerely apologize if my remarks to the Board of Commissioners were offensive. It was not my intention to create ill will. It is important that the Board of Commissioners support the efforts of the Tarpon Springs Shepherd Center. I believe we all have the same goals and we can work together to achieve the best possible results for all our parties involved. I look forward to working with the Board of Commissioners in building a community that comes together in their care and compassion for the less fortunate in our community. And again, please accept my apology. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening. God bless you. Good evening. Peter Lacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. 
I had a lot of things I wanted to bring up tonight. I'll have to narrow them down. First off, as I spoke at public comments last week about the intersection of Safford and uh, MLK, it was bad then, it's worse now. I go online, I still don't see any kind of updates. I do see something about the Mears Crossing where the timeline and permits and all that stuff, so I'm curious, does any of that work have anything to do with the Mears Crossing? Does any of the utility work that's been going on the last couple months at the corner of Mears and uh, Alter 19 have to do with the Mears Crossing? I have questions about, uh, since they're beginning to build, have they made a commitment to begin starting on the road? Because according to the development agreement, that road needs to be done before they get a certificate of occupancy, and they're looking to try to have this done by spring of 219 if you look at their website. So those are my issues there. Secondly, um, a lot of you probably have Spectrum. Did you get this little letter in the mail? Another example of how our corporate cable companies are disenfranchising our residents. If you remember a number of years back when they went to digital, anybody who had an analog TV and wanted to get the, s the signal for any public meetings had to get a box. They were only going to charge you a dollar. Come on, it's only a dollar. You can afford it. Well, now they've really jumped the scale. I got one, then my mom got one, and uh, it says you'd be required to have a digital receiver on your home uh, by October 9th. Uh, for me, I get it for 12 months free. Uh, for my mom, uh, because it says uh, she's in an apartment complex term of the current agreement. But it's got a lot of little stars. A lot of little stars down here. Uh, standard rates apply after promotional period ends. Standard rates will apply for installation, taxes, fees, surcharges, and additional equipment. Now, why do I bring this up? My mom lives at Green Dolphin, 55 over community. Most of them are over 65 and 70. They're older folks. They got older TVs. My mom has older TVs, three of them. At my mom's house, door knocks, it's the lady from next door, about 85, 88 years old, I, I can't say. And she's in a panic. Oh, they called me, they're coming over, they gotta fix it, put a box on my TV, they're charging me $49 to put it in. That's the little print down there, 49 bucks. Now, I know for my mom, she'll get one, then if we want one for the kitchen or the bedroom, you know, it's another, and they don't disclose how much they're gonna charge for the other boxes. And we have an agreement, I believe, with them, and I just think it's important, since we speak out for seniors, uh, that we uh, speak out for them also. Lastly, many of you here are second, first or second, maybe third generation people of immigrants. I don't know about you, but when my grandfather came over in the early 1900s, part of the way he was able to get in, and many of you all the same way, you had to have a relative here, a cousin, an uncle. My, gran my grandfather had an uncle, uh, a cousin that was a dentist, so he was able to come in. And what is that really called? Really, it's what they call chain migration. Someone from the family and someone else comes in. Tampa Bay Times today, with regards to our congressional race, we have Mr. Bilirakis and Mr. Hunter. The two diverge in policy. Hunter condemned the Trump administration's family separation policy while Bill Arrakis called for an end to chain migration, but supporting allowing immigrants brought to the U.S. as children to get legal status. Do you know anybody who has relatives who want to come over? If Mr. they do, Bilakis, they need to come now. Your time has expired. Thank you very much. Are there any other public comments? Thank you. Next is the uh, consent agenda. Item number one is the minutes. A is August 21st, 2018, the regular session. B is September 4th, 2018, regular session. C is September 5th, 
2018 <laughs> special session. Number two is the satisfaction and release of liens. Number three is the attorney fees. A, Trask and Dynog, invoice 56, 693, and B is Johnson and Johnson, invoice 3305 and 3306. Number four is a special event. A, Tarpa Springs Leadership Conservatory for the Arts Outdoor Music Festival, October 20th. Number fifth is to approve correction of errors on the original agenda item. For five, number 180172 NRS single source purchase of maintenance and GPS service and GPS routers. And number six is increase file 150018 CRS water and wastewater supplies. And number seven is a file number 170163 CRS technology solutions with related equipment and accessories through source well contract number zero. 10061CDW. Any items that you like to pull? Commission Carr? Uh, number four. You'd like to pull number four? Just clarification if we could. Sure. Uh, City Manager, Mark, do you know uh, if they've shut down Golf Road before in the past for this event? Yes, for okay. at least the last okay. three, four. All right, thanks. I think we remember we tried it one time without it, and it was an absolute disaster because of all the schools and the buses come in, so that was the safest way to do it. Okay. Um, so that's why I'd like. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Any public comments on the items one through seven? Here and on, any addition, uh, commission comments? I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. We are now going to the special consent agenda. Item number eight is a settlement officer for its administrative fine, Clavacus, City of Tarpa Springs, Court Enforcement Board. The City Attorney will present this item. Uh, yes. As you all know, um, on um, March 8th, 2018, the, this board denied a property owner's request for reconsideration of a fine amount um, that was imposed um, on a property for code enforcement issues. Um, the property owner uh, actually, after the fine was imposed, um, took this to uh, the appellate section of the Pinellas County Circuit Court, um, alleging that uh, the fine as imposed was improper. Um, the order that was appealed was not the order that they were intending to appeal. As uh, Because of that, the city attorney went and asked the court to strike that uh, appeal. The court agreed. Uh, the appeal was stricken. However, in speaking with the representative for the property owner, um, and uh, as is contained in the memo, we are recommending that the city uh, settle. The property owner has, through council, offered to settle the uh, suit um, for a recommended $5,000 of the administrative fines. Um, due to some procedural issues, we do recommend that the city settle. Um, and I can answer any questions that you might have about this. Thank you. Are there any commission comments or questions? I, I did Vice question. Member. So, this individual appealed, correct? Yes. And then, um, what was the original amount of the fine again? I'm sorry. Um, the principal of the lien was twenty-five thousand one hundred dollars. There was nine hundred and seven dollars in interest and two hundred and three dollars in costs. The appeal that they actually took was of the final order, um, which was the order um, on the reconsideration, uh, and that is what the court struck down because they did not timely take an appeal of the initial order. Um, so the city could continue to litigate this through the appeals process. It is likely that we would uh, succeed on appeal. However, if we were go going to foreclose the lien, we would run into some issues procedurally and would not be able to foreclose on the lien or collect. So at this time, we are looking to recommend settlement of the $5,000. Well, I'll take your recommendation. I just, on the face value, if somebody appeals and it's now obviously cost us you know, money to have you know, attorneys um, do, do do what they have to do, and now they're coming back because they lost on their appeal, or or, 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 or a portion of it rather, and then we're going to settle. But if that's what you recommend, we do in the best interest. I would I would motion for. 
Are there any uh, commissioner comments? I'm just curious how the five thousand dollar was reached. It was an this. offer from from the property owners council. It was an, an amount that they came to. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? No. We have a motion on the floor. Second. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Hear none. Uh, we can pay any motion. Roll we have a motion on the floor. We already have a motion. A Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes, thank you. Next is the uh, ordinance and resolution. Item number nine is the ordinance 2018-18, the application 1869, rezoning L. UA Protos. This is a second reading. This is quasi uh, judicial. The city attorney will read and explain the quasi judicial process. And the quasi judicial procedures will apply to both uh, items number nine and ten on the agenda tonight, as both are quasi judicial proceedings. These are quasi judicial proceedings where the commission acts in a quasi judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi judicial hearing, it is not the commission's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Commission is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Commission may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Commission is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Commission is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the Board of Commission who wish to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening? Seeing none, anyone wishing to present evidence or speak on these two applications, both uh, agenda items 9 and 10, if you could please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So sworn. Um, for the first application, if uh, staff could put their have their presentation, please. Um, there's no additional information since first read on this application. So uh, with that, staff continues to recommend approval, and I can answer any questions that you might have. No, I was actually going to ask. Is that, does the applicant have anything additionally that they'd like to add since the last reading? Good evening. I'm Cindy Terrapan. I represent the applicant, Mrs. Protus. Um, I just would reserve if there's any comments that I need to respond to. Otherwise, I don't have anything new to add. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this issue? Harry Andropoulos, 905 and 909 Bayshore. I'm just uh, reiterating my same uh, comment I had priorly. I am in support of the of the granting of the zoning. I just want to reiterate my concern about the drainage of these lots and they're draining onto my property and that the planning director has addressed it with me and she said that she will try and take care of this. I just wanted in the record that I have concerns with the drainage in that culvert and that's all. Are there any other public comments? Okay, the public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Are there any commission comments, questions? If you're not, I will detain the motion. Approved. Second. In roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes. Next is item number 10, ordinance 2018-23. The application 1866 is to vacate the right of way Lucille Drive Capanitis. Uh, this is also quasi judicial. The city attorney will read the title and will explain the uh, judicial process. This is for application ordinance uh, number 2018 23, application 18 66 for the vacation of a right of way on Lucille Drive. Go ahead with the staff presentation. 
Okay. This um, application is for a vacation of 4,478.53 uh, square feet of a portion of Lucille Drive lying um, north of lot 20, block 4 of the Bayshore Heights subdivision. Um, the application is for that portion of Bayshore Heights that was not part of the replat um, that was done to the south. So the property is, in fact, zone, um, zoned R100. And it lies just outside that area that was replatted in 2016. Uh, there are no utilities within the vacation area, and the applicant has provided the required letters of no objection from the various utility providers. The request does not meet the criteria, however, of the Land Development Code, um, specifically Section 2.1.6.001A4. The property does not provide the joining na the neighborhood with usable access um, or vista of the sh city shorelines. Uh, Lucille Drive does, in fact, provide usable access to the neighborhood, and the roadway terminates at Kramer Bayou, providing access to the city shorelines and vistas. Um, this application was noticed um, to the property owners, and in the legal notice was sent to the paper on September. Uh, ran in the paper on September 7, 2007. It should be 18. Um, the Tampa Bay Times, North uh, Pinellas Times edition. Technical review team saw this application on June 28, 2018. The only objection at that time was the planning and zoning department. We, we objected because it doesn't meet the criteria um, within the code for a uh, vacation of right of way. Um, as such, staff is recommending denial of this application at this time based on the fact that it does not meet the criteria of, two, of Section 21601 of the Land Development Code. Um, and the, that, with that, I have, can answer any questions that you may have on this application. Any questions from the board? Yes, I'd like to ask a couple of questions on that. Uh, you have mentioned that that has not meet the criteria um, but also there's no utilities into the vacation area. Do you know if is any plan in the future that the, any of the utilities companies will actually going to need this area to run cables or anything, any utilities? At this time, there, 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 there is no information um, to that indication that they would need this particular location for that. Again, both lots adjacent to this on either side of the actual vacation area are vacant. Um, one was actually part of the last rezone that we just did, so it's a vacant piece of property. And the lot 20 that this is just um, north of is also vacant at this time. So at this time, there's no requirement um, or wouldn't be a requirement for any utilities to go along that, um, that portion of Lucy seal drive I have a question to uh, our city attorney do we ever allow an applicant to have a portion of the right of way with the condition used that if we ever need it we'll return it back to the city um, I mean you as the board you do have the ability to put conditions on an application however uh, since this is quasi judicial you have to find a positive finding on every single one of the criteria in order to grant the application if this board does find that there's a positive finding based on the events presented today you could conditionally approve it um, but you would have to make a positive finding on all the criteria that's already um, that's in the code thanks any other comments? Is the applicant here and would like to make a presentation? Is the applicant present this evening? Not seeing the applicant. Uh, is there any public comment on this issue? Good evening again, Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. I'm a winner either way it goes. I either get part of the vacating, which will enlarge the lot that we just changed the zoning on. And I had started this way before he ever came to the city for a vacating of the right of way. Uh, when the uh, development started going in, they wanted to put the road in for uh, the new Bayshore Heights. The only problem was the city had the right of way all the way around where it comes out now. Uh, like I said, either way you go on it, it doesn't matter to me because I win either way. But the city has to be very cautious. When we're not here 10, 
12, 15 years down the road, and as tarpon grows and the area grows out there, you may have to open that road. Because when you ride around Tarpon Springs, there are roads that are barricaded, some so the high school kids won't go through one development, and eventually that little portion is going to have to be opened up. As you go out to Fred Howard Park Beach, there are areas where roads are cut off to the entrance to the park. One day, as Tarpon changes, that's going to have to go through. And all through the Tarpon Springs, we have roads that have been closed off, but the time is coming as traffic gets heavier and as tarpon grows. So like I said, I would just caution, because if he builds on that property, you can't make him cut off part of his house, and you can't push it around. And um, that's the only thing I ask y'all to look at is the future of opening roads in tarpon that are already platted. These are paper platted roads. And uh, this was all part of the Ferguson estate years ago. So that's what you have to look at. Uh, what's going to happen down the future uh, when we need that road or if we need it, and we don't know. And we may all be out at Cycadia by then. We don't know. Are there any public, other public comments on this item? Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Are there any uh, commission comments on this item? No. I will obtain a motion. Motion approved. Also denied, sorry. <laughs> you change your motion? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Motion motion to deny. Okay. We're Second. going with the city's uh, recommendation. Yes, his recommendation. Yes, I'm sorry, I spoke too quickly. Yeah. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. A second. I'm sorry. A yes is going along with the motion, correct? Correct. Yes is to, yes deny. Is to deny. Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes. Thank you. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda, and then we go to staff comments. Police Chief? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney? Nothing here. Nigel, thank you for being here tonight. That was my pleasure. Thank you. City Manager? <clears throat> yes. Um. I want to try to do a work session, and I'd totally like to maybe get two in by the end of the year, but I don't know with the holiday schedule, but we definitely need to try to do one. And since we've got, you know, five weeks in October, I'd like to try to do it. There's open dates, the 22nd to the 25th, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. That week is pretty much open. You really don't have to give me tonight, but what I want to do, first of all, with the new budget, I want to talk about the priorities. We talked about a lot of things of beautification, of projects we probably got two and a half years of work to do and I want to get everybody's priorities which ones you want us to start off first and start using the budget and money for all the things we're doing we also want to talk about the issue Commissioner Carr talked about in the CRA I think we'll be ready to talk to you in work session about some ideas of the incentives that he talked about in our CRA area and possibly a couple other items that we have so um, if you would get with me the bad days, I'd like to, to do that work session again, either 22nd, 23rd, 24th, or 25th of October. And I think we'll have a full agenda to try to, to, try to get those things set so we can begin um, the projects and where you'd like us to begin and where you'd like us to start on in, in many different areas that we've talked about in previous mission at meetings. Okay. Mr. Likuras on the work session, if you please include the uh, action plan for the stormwater issues that we have. Uh, Mr. Robbins, he always creates the, uh, the, you know, the actual plan. If you bring that with you. That's usually a regular budget item. That's usually so at, at a regular commission to meeting. To, to discuss the, uh, the action plan, not to approve it. Okay. We're gonna have a, okay. You're going to increase that agenda because we've got a lot of issues to discuss All right. otherwise. And we usually bring the stormwater to a regular session. We usually do that discussion in a regular session. But let, let's see what else is on the agenda. And, it's it's pretty it's very important knowing oh. that we have the uh, sea level rise so I like to have that. Well, we may put it on in one of the oct the second October. I mean, let me get with that and do because that, right. that's more of a discussion. I we should have a regular session than yeah. I think we're going to have in a work session. But we'll look to do that to get it on one of the meetings in October. Thank you. Thank you. City clerk. 
No Look, if you just just let me know if there's bad days or which which are the bad days within the next week or so, so we can we got plenty of time to set it up. Okay, thank you. Before we go to the board comments, um, I'd like to uh, recognize and to thank Mr. Charlie Criticus that is here with us today. He's visiting from Calumnos. Mr. Criticus was our escort when the BOC, our city commissioner, was visiting our sister cities, and I want to thank him again in public. Um, thank you. Vice Mayor, got comments? <coughs> Oh, yes. Um, I think it's Monday. I always get my calendars confused, though. Um, a judge, Kim Campbell, I met her in leadership Pinellas. Her son's in a Cub Scout pack in Palm Harbor doing, like, a civic government type thing. And um, they're, she's having myself and then Commissioner um, um, Lavala La, 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 Chris to come in and talk about, you know, I would guess I'll do the city government portion, obviously. He'll do the, the state government portion. Mine's the better portion, of course. So um, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to uh, do that. As as I mentioned before, that's how I got started. My interest in this was uh, uh, the, when when I was in Cub Scouts. Want again thank the ladies of Junior League for coming tonight. You picked the best meeting. This is our shortest meeting in probably six <laughs> months, and some of our less theatrics too. So uh, hope you learned a lot and you um, decide to be engaged in the future wherever you live. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Kick. Thank you. I just I just wanted to uh, remind everybody this Friday is the homecoming parade um, downtown. So I think it starts at five o'clock. So um, try and come out. Line up is at four thirty. The parade starts at five o'clock. So try and come downtown if you can and um, and support our uh, high school. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Vice Mayor, is that Howard's, uh, are you talking about with the Boy Scouts, uh, mm -hmm. Howard's initiative with the Boy Scouts and the water I, I, think, I think they meet at the Methodist Church in Palm Harbor, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. She just reached out to a bunch of us, and, and I just responded yes, and then Chris did so. But I'll find out. The, 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 yeah, I got the something from him because he's um, his mentor in leadership analysis here, so I thought it might be the same project. But anyway, I was curious. Interesting. So, uh, yes, everybody come out to homecoming uh, Friday night. Um, we love to see people out there uh, supporting our spongers. Also, we have a wine walk uh, Saturday night, so that's always an exciting event and uh, a very popular event, so I look forward to seeing a lot of people out there. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. I just want to make the rest of the board aware. I think the city manager touched on a few of these already, and I may have touched on them on other subjects uh, so far tonight. But a few things that I asked the city manager to bring forward um, and discussion items or in a workshop are going to be the following. Um, one's for the CRA area, um, looking at developer grants and also looking at covering impact fees for new developments. Um, what steps can be made to encourage property owners to rent their buildings along the main roads of Tarpon Springs? We've got a lot of vacant uh, buildings along Tarpon Avenue along Pinellas Avenue towards Sponge Docks, going north and south of Tarpon Avenue. Um, and then also, what are the plans to promote the properties that are in need of redevelopment around the city? Number two is city-owned buildings and what the maintenance programs are. Uh, as it was ironic, there's a public comment tonight that was asking about what's the status of um, the maintenance on some of the city-owned buildings. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have full transparency amongst the board and some type of reporting mechanism, if it's an annual report or some sort, to show what the statuses are, maybe age of ACs, maybe roofs, um, what's coming up, uh, because I have had public interest ask me questions about this in the past. Uh, the third item is talking about historical signs. Um, when I travel to other areas of the country, a lot of times in the south, you'll see these signs that are in historic areas of towns that may say something along the lines, this, at this site, this happened on this date. Uh, Tarpon Springs is a really unique historic area, uh, and I think we're really missing an opportunity to continue to educate all of our uh, visitors that are here and a lot of the people that move into town that might not know the history. Uh, some of the areas that I think about are the Cultural Center, um, the Silver King Brewery where the old jail fire station is, Sunset Beach, uh, what Sunset Beach used to be, uh, something about the Anquote Lighthouse, 
train station, a waterworks building, the original Pappas' restaurant, uh, history of the shrimp fishing and sponge industry, the Tarpon Inn, and I know during discussions we could go on further, so this is going to be, I believe, a discussion topic at some point. Karen did have a very uh, a unique idea also about incorporating maybe some old pictures um, of where, what it was before in the past and what it is today, and I thought that was a pretty unique idea as well. And number four, I would like to add on to this one, based on the public comment tonight, I thought that was a, a very good point that someone brought up about the shopping carts that are around town. Ironically, I did see someone picking up in a box truck shopping carts uh, along Pine, I believe, towards Lowe's this past weekend. But it is a, a nuisance around town, and I, I agree with that public comment. So I'm not sure if there's a code opportunity or something that we could put in place uh, for these other um, supermarkets or stores that have shopping carts for their patrons if we can require some type of locking mechanism. I, I do think that's a great idea uh, because there is a lot of shopping carts left. Uh, and a lot of the areas around town. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, express my condolences to the family of uh, William Dove, a city employee who just passed away. Our prayers and thoughts to uh, are with his family and friends. And uh, I think at some time this week we're going to have a celebration of his life. It's 1030 Thursday. Uh, Thursday, at, Thursday at Sunset Beach. Okay. Um, also, like to uh, announce to everyone that um, Saturday, September 22nd, we uh, have the Little League opening day, and that starts at 9 a.m. on Mears Boulevard. I like to uh, report to, uh, to the BOC that I had my uh, monthly uh, meeting with uh, Commissioner Eggers. We have uh, an excellent relationship with him. We meet every month, and we discuss different issues and different projects that uh, the county has been planned here in Tarpa Springs. One is the, uh, the sidewalk installation on Alternate 19 and Anclo Road. He's going to provide us uh, an update soon. And the Anclo Road paving that we've been trying to get for a long time, it finally has been uh, scheduled to be done. And we also discussed the shoreline issue on the Wickham Boulevard. So he's going to be giving us more information on that. This is something that we'll be trying to get for a long time. But also he advised me that on February 2019, the Pinellas County Commissioners will create a priority list of projects relating to painting for Pinellas. And he's going to provide a list to us so for our review and recommendations. This is projects that are relating to the painful Pinellas in Tarpa Springs. So uh, I welcome that. And I, again, I want to thank uh, Commission Egger for being a, uh, an excellent partner to, uh, to Tarpa Springs. That concludes our regular session meeting tonight, and it's adjourned at 7.27 p.m. And I want to thank you all for being here, and good night. Can we, can I be brought back? Just some research, and there has to be something else done.